Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will proclaim your praise. Sing to the Lord and shout the joy to the rock who saves us. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Let us approach him with praise and thanksgiving and sing joyful songs to the Lord. The Lord is God, the mighty God, the great King over all the gods. He holds in His hands the depths of the earth and the highest mountains as well. He made the sea, it belongs to Him. The dry land too, for it was formed by his hands. Come then, let us bow down and worship, bending the knee before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are his people, the flock he shepherds. Today listen to the voice of the Lord. Do not harden your hearts as your fathers did in the wilderness. When at Meribah and Massah they challenged me and provoked me, although they had seen all of my works. Forty years I endured that generation. I said, they are a people whose hearts go astray and they do not know my ways. So I swore in my anger, they shall not enter into my rest. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. Come, let us sing to the Lord and shout with joy to the rock who saves us. Send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. Bless the Lord, my soul. Lord God, how great you are. Clothed in majesty and glory. Wrapped in light as in our room. You stretch out the heavens like a tent. Above the rains you build your dwelling. You make the clouds your chariot. You walk on the wings of the wind. You make the winds your messengers and flashing fire your servants. You founded the earth on its base to stand firm from age to age. You wrapped it with the ocean like a cloak. The waters stood higher than the mountains. At your threat they took to flight. At the voice of your thunder they fled. They rose over the mountains and flowed down to the place which you had appointed. You set limits they might not pass, lest they return to cover the earth. You make springs gush forth in the valleys. 
They flow in between the hills. They give drink to all the beasts of the field. The wild asses quench their thirst. On their banks dwell the birds of heaven. On the branches they sing their song. From your dwelling you water the hills, earth drinks its fill of your gift. You make the grass grow for the cattle, and the plants to serve man's needs. That he may bring forth bread from the earth, and wine to cheer man's heart. Oil to make his face shine, and bread to strengthen man's heart. The trees of the Lord drink their fill, the cedars he planted on Lebanon. There the birds build their nests, on the treetop the stork has her home. The goats find a home on the mountains, the rabbits hide in the rocks. You made the moon to mark the months. The sun knows the time for its setting. When you spread the darkness, it is night, and all the beasts of the forest creep forth. The young lions roar for their prey and ask their food from God. At the rising of the sun, they steal away and go to rest in their dens. Man goes forth to his work, to labor till evening falls. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. There is the sea vast and wide, with its moving swarms past counting, <coughs> living things great and small. The ships are moving there, and the monsters you made to play with. All of these look to you to give them their food in due season. You give it, they gather it up. You open your hand, they have their fill. You hide your face, they are dismayed. And you, and you take back your spirit, they die, returning to the dust from which they came. You send forth your spirit, they are created. And you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord last forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He looks on the earth and it trembles. The mountains and forth smoke at his touch. I will sing to the Lord all my life. Make music to my God while I live. <coughs> May my thoughts be pleasing to him, I find my joy in the Lord. Let sinners vanish from the earth, and the wicked exist no more. Bless the Lord, my soul. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> you send forth your spirit and renew the face of the earth. from the beginning of the book of Ecclesiastes. The words of David's son, Kohileth, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says Kohileth. Vanity of vanities, all things are vanity. 
What profit has man from all the labor which he toils at under the sun? One generation passes and another comes, but the world forever stays. The sun rises and the sun goes down. Then it presses on to the place where it rises, blowing now, one, blowing now toward the south, then toward the north. The wind turns again and again, resuming its rounds. All rivers go to the sea, yet never does the sea become full. To the place where they go, the rivers keep on going. All speech is labored. There is nothing man can say. The eye, has, the eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor is the ear filled with hearing. What has been, that, that will be. What has been done, that will be done. Nothing is new under the sun. Even the thing of which we say, see, this is new, has already existed in the ages that preceded us. There is no remembrance of the men of old, nor of those to come will there be any remembrance among those who come after them. I, Kohilith, was king over Israel in Jerusalem, and I applied my mind to search and investigate in wisdom all things that are done under the sun. A thankless task God has appointed for men to be busied about. I have seen all things that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and a chase after wind. What is crooked cannot be made straight, and what is missing cannot be supplied. Though I said to myself, Behold, I have become great and stored up wisdom beyond all who were before me in Jerusalem, and my mind has brought experience of wisdom and knowledge. Yet when I applied my mind to know wisdom and knowledge, madness and folly, I learned that also this is a chase after wind. For in, what, for in much wisdom there is much sorrow, and he who stores up knowledge stores up grief. From the chapters on charity, St. <clears throat> Maximus the Confessor, Abbot. Charity is a right attitude of mind, which prefers nothing to the knowledge of God. If a man possesses any strong attachment to the things of this earth, he cannot possess true charity. For anyone who really loves God prefers to know and experience God rather than his creatures. The whole set and longing of his mind is ever directed toward him. For God is far superior to all his creation, since everything which exists has been made by God and for him. And so, in deserting God, who is beyond compare, for the inferior works of creation, a man shows that he values God, the author of creation, less than creation itself. The Lord himself reminds us, Whoever loves me will keep my commandments, and this is my commandment, that you love one another. So the man who does not love his neighbor does not obey God's command. But one who does not obey his command cannot love God. A man is blessed if he can love all men equally. Moreover, if he truly loves God, he must love his neighbor absolutely. Such a man cannot hoard his wealth. Rather, like God himself, he generously gives from his own resources to each man, according to his needs. Since he imitates God's generosity, the only distinction he draws is the person's need. He does not distinguish between a good man and a bad one, a just man and one who is unjust. Yet his own goodness of will makes him prefer the man who strives after virtue to the one who is depraved. A charitable mind is not displayed simply in giving money. 
it is manifested still more by personal service as well as by the communication of God's word to others. In fact, if a man's service toward his brothers is genuine, and if he really renounces worldly concerns, he is freed from selfish desires, for he now shares in God's own knowledge and love. Since he does not possess God's love, he does not experience w- since he does possess God's love, he does not experience weariness as he follows the Lord as God. Rather, following the prophet Jeremiah, he withstands every type of reproach and hardship without even harboring an evil thought toward man. For Jeremiah warns us, do not say, we are the Lord's temple. Neither should you say, faith alone in our Lord Jesus Christ can save me. By itself, faith accomplishes nothing, for even the devil believes and shudders. No, faith must be joined to an active love of God, which is expressed in good works. The charitable man is distinguished by sincere and long-suffering service to his fellow man. It also means using things aright. Save those who are eagerly waiting for him. O Lord, have pity on us, for you we wait. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of trouble. Head the roaring sound, peoples flee. When you rise in your majesty, nations are scattered. Men gather spoil as caterpillars are gathered up. They rush upon it like the onrush of locusts. The Lord is exalted, enthroned on high. He fills Zion with right and justice. That which makes her seasons lasting. The riches that save her are wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is her treasure. See the men of Ariel cry out in the streets. The messengers of Shalem weep bitterly. The highways are desolate. Travelers have quit the paths. Covenants are broken, their terms are spurned. Yet no man gives it a thought. The country languishes in mourning. Lebanon withers with shame. Sharon is like the stone. And Bashan and Carmel are stripped bare. Now will I rise up, says the Lord. Now will I be exalted. Now be lifted up. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. Christ will appear to save those who are eagerly waiting for Him. The bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Hear you who are far off what I have done. You who are near acknowledge my might. On Zion sinners are in dread. 
trembling grids the impious. Who of us can live with the consuming fire? Who of us can live with the everlasting flames? He who practices virtue and speaks honestly, who spurns what is gained by oppression, brushing his hands free of contact with a bride, stopping his ears last year of bloodshed, closing his eyes lest he look on evil, he shall dwell on the heights, his stronghold shall be the rocky fastness. His food and drink in steady supply. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come now and forever. Amen. The bread which I shall give for the life of the world is my flesh. Know then what are the riches of his glorious inheritance. Come to our aid, O God of the universe, and put all nations in dread of you. Raise your hand against the heathen, may they, that they may realize your power. As you have used us to show them your holiness, so now use them to show us your glory. Thus they will know, as we know, that there is no God but you. Give no signs and work no wonders. Show forth the splendor of your right hand and arm. Rouse your anger, pour out wrath. Humble the enemy, scatter the foe. Hasten the day, bring on the time. Crush the heads of the hostile rulers. Let raging fire consume the fugitive. And your people's oppressors meet destruction. Gather all the tribes of Jacob, <coughs> that they may inherit the land as of old. Show mercy to the people called by your name, Israel, whom you named your firstborn. Take pity on your holy city, Jerusalem, your dwelling place. Fill Zion with your majesty, your temple with your glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, to God who is, who was, and who is to come, now and forever. Amen. May you know what are the riches of his glorious inheritance. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. On the evening of that first day of the week, even though the disciples had locked the doors of the place where they, where they were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. At the sight of the Lord, the disciples rejoiced. Peace be with you, he said again. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. Then he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. 
If you forgive men's sins, they are forgiven them. If you hold them bound, they are bound. It happened that one of the twelve, Thomas, the name means twin, was absent when Jesus came. The other disciples kept telling him, We have seen the Lord. His answer was, I'll never believe it without probing the nail prints in his hands, without putting my finger in the nail marks and my hand into his side. A week later, the disciples were once more in the room, and this time Thomas was with them. Despite the locked doors, Jesus came and stood before them. Peace be with you, he said. Then to Thomas, take your finger and examine my hands. Put your hand into my side. Do not persist in your unbelief, but believe. Thomas said in response, My Lord and my God. Jesus then said to him, You became a believer because you saw me. Blessed are they who have not seen and have believed. Jesus performed many other signs as well, signs not recorded here in the presence of his disciples. But these are these have been recorded <clears throat> to help you believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, so that through this faith you may have life in his name. Deum laudamus, te dominum confitemur, de eternum patrem, omnis terra veneratur, tibi omnes angeli, tibi celi et universe potestates, tibi geruvim et serafim, in Jesabili voces proclamant Sanctus, 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 Dominus Deus Sabaot, Plenis Uncedi et Terra, Majestatis Gloria Tue. Te gloriosus, apostolorum corus, te profetarum, laudabilis numerus, te martirum candidatus, laudat exercitus, te per orbem terrarum, sancta confitetur ecclesia, Patrem, immense majestatis, venerandum tuum verum, et unicum fidium, sandum quoque paraclitum spiritum, tu rex gloriae Christi. Tu Padris sempiternus es filius, Tu ad liberandum susceptus hominem, Non oruisti virginis uterum, Tu de victor mordis aculeo, Aperuisti credentibus regna celorum, Tu ad exteram Dei sedes, in gloria Padris, iud ex crederis, es eventurus. Te ergo que sumus, tuis famulis subveni, quos precioso sanguine redem misti. 
Eterna factum, sanctis tuis, in gloria numerari. Salvum fac populum tuum domine, et benedicte ereditari tue. Erregeus, et extole illus, usque in eternum. Per singulos dies, benedicimus te. Et laudamus nomen tuum in seculum. Et in seculum seculi. Dignare domine die isto. Sine peccato nos custodire. Miserere nostri domine. Miserere nostri. Fiat misericordia tua domine super nos. Quem ad modum speravimus in te. In te, Domine, speravi. Non confundar in eternum. Father, before us the wisdom and love you've re revealed in your Son. Keep us before the wisdom and love you've revealed in your Son. Help us to be like him in word and deed. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Let us praise the Lord. And give him praise. May the divine assistance be always with us. And also with our brothers <coughs> and sisters. 